The public is the ultimate funder of all, or, or a lot of scientific research that goes on in, in the UK. Um, and it's important also, um, if you're thinking about how to, to make the most out of the science that we do, that people feel comfortable with, with, with what, they've, what they've paid for, what's being developed, because they're the customers for it in the end as well. Um, so whether that means um, people getting accurate and engaging information through the TV or, or in a newspaper article, um, everybody, in, and the government included, has an interest in making sure that, that, that they do and that people feel part of science and feel comfortable with it. It's actually how to work with people, um, how to promote best practice, how to, to um, encourage researchers to engage the public themselves. It's about taking all sorts of different arguments um, and, and different opinions that are coming in from people, um, variety of sources of evidence, pulling that all together and building that into something that a, a minister or a senior official can understand um, with not very much time to take it all in. So you have to summarise it and be confident in your ability to, to pick out the right bits and, and decide what's important. And the fact that you feel right in the middle of something important is, is really rewarding, I think. Um, you know, you can go home uh, and, and kind of read the news websites and stuff that you've seen going on at work or even stuff that you've been personally involved in advising is, is now a, a news story. I studied chemistry at the University of York. Um, I specialised in natural resources and the environment. Having spent a year in industry, I was clear that I didn't want to just be uh, a pair of hands in the lab. And I felt that to, to get past that, I needed to do a, a PhD. Uh, so I went to do a PhD at um, Imperial College in London. At the same time, um, I was going into schools to give talks, give careers advice. Um, I took part, um, I was part of um, the Voice of Young Science network that's run by Sense About Science. And so I got quite involved in, in kind of debates and, and, and um, activities around science communication, science policy. So uh, it felt like a natural choice that I could still use the things that I'd learnt um, in, my, in my research and in my degree, uh, but not actually being in a lab. Um, so when a job came up in biz that was science communication policy, it was just a perfect fit. The biggest piece of advice I'd give to anybody studying chemistry is that it's not just about, it's not just about the lab bench. Um, the idea that, that you'll have a 40-year career in the same company um, is, is something that, that probably doesn't exist anymore. Um, most people are going to be moving around, maybe you'll have two or three careers um, in your life. Uh, so, so just focusing on, on one set of, of, of practical skills or, or even just one set of technical knowledge um, doesn't set you up perfectly for, for what is likely to be a very varied career. Um, the, the experience I had outside the lab, um, working with, with schools, teaching overseas, um, doing interviews on, uh, on BBC Watchdog and things like that, they were all things that kind of added uh, skills to what I could offer to an employer. Um, and I think that was really important for me when I realised that that maybe a, a kind of a, a normal research path wasn't right. I had other options, I had other skills um, to offer. You're a problem solver, you're good with numbers, um, you can think creatively. There are lots of things which are actually much more broadly applicable. Um, and actually I think often when people are talking about the demand for, for chemistry graduates or the demand for graduates with a science and engineering background, what they're talking about is some of those other broader skills. I was supporting uh, an expert group of, of 15 people from the world of science and the media. Um, so they were very senior people in the BBC, um, editors of, of, of magazines, um, very senior scientists um, and press officers as well. Um, we, we had a series of meetings over the course of about nine months to um, essentially write an action plan for the UK about what we should do about science and the media. Um, it was incredible access to a whole load of very exciting senior people. A year later, the report that we wrote um, has been picked up, nearly all of the actions have, have been taken on, either completed or ongoing, and, and I, we can really start to see some of the, the impact of, of what, um, what we decided was important. I'm going to go and live in, in Bangalore um, from January onwards, 
um, working for the UK government in, in the Science and Innovation Network. Um, it's a network that's about promoting international collaboration in science um, between the UK um, and other countries. Um, I can't say that three years ago sat in a lab, uh, it would have even occurred to me that this is what I might be doing next. Uh, but that's often how things work out. You know, you pick up an, uh, a new opportunity and then that leads to something else. Um, and it's, it's incredibly exciting to be, to be taking on a new challenge like that, even if it uh, wasn't part of the plan <laughs> not very long ago. If you're looking to join the civil service, um, one of the easier, well not, not easier ways, but one of the most obvious routes um, for somebody who's, say, got a chemistry degree uh, is to join the civil service fast stream, um, which is kind of the graduate entry um, programme for, for the civil service, where you get a huge amount of training and support, um, and the idea is that you move around every year um, to develop experience in a number of different jobs.